Alright, now to start off my Reve Festival collection, I have the Irene version of day one. Um, I was eagerly awaiting for this album to come out, so I pre-ordered it along with my friend who was also a really big Reve love. Um, he and I were just like patiently waiting for like some teasers to come out in last year because we were like, where's their comeback? We need to come back, you know? So now that we, when we got the teasers, I was in the middle of work alone on a Saturday because I work alone on Saturdays. Um, and uh, the teaser dropped and I was like, uh, what is going on? And then I started texting my friend and we were like having a panic attack because we were like, oh, come back as soon. And we were waiting every day when it reached midnight uh, KST to kind of get some, you know, teaser, new teaser coming out. But yeah, when the song came out at first, I was really shocked that they went for that style. But, you know, we love occult songs. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, this isn't my favorite album style-wise. As we're gonna see in the photo book, the outfits were not that great. But I mean, the songs in the album were not bad at all. I think one of my favorite songs of the year that was in this album is LP. So, I mean, their discography did not disappoint. It continued thriving. Um, it can't, the, by the way, this is a little travel kit or magic kit for this case. Um, that was Irene's version and it comes with a little balloon of Reeve, which I have not inflated yet because I don't want to break it. And then it comes with these like little magic like glasses. Um, I don't want to open them because you have to like assemble them, but basically like the lyric book is, um, like designed in a way where you need to have the glasses to read them. Um, and then we also have a little ticket and similar to the lyric book, it has the day two, um, and she can see with the glasses and it says Irene. And I think the other thing in here is the little stick for the balloon. And along with that, it came with um, double-sided photo cards as well as the member photo card so let's go so the member photo card I have is sulky super adorable looking like she's in the practice room and has her signature on it and then for the group photo cards again this is where you see how the outfits were not that great <laughs> Because, yeah. Um, so we have the group photo card. Then we have Sulgi. Then we have Joy. This hair was very controversial. Um, so like when it came out, like this became like the biggest issue or like topic of discussion during the song. Or like the era. So yeah, I didn't personally like it either. And then we have Wendy giving you Avril Lavigne punk pop vibe. I love that. And then we have Irene with the uh, Joanne era realness, I say. And finally, Yeti. It looks like she's about to go to Coachella. And yeah, so those were the photo cards that came with the album as well. Um, And then now let's go into the photo book and let's look at the next question that we're going to answer. All right, this is the CD plate. It's Reef and it's pink. Hope you guys can see it. All right, so for the photo book, again, most of the outfits in here are not the best, so. I didn't really take a long time looking at it, just flip through. My notification went off, but that's okay. All right, so the next question I have is, what do you look at when you stand groups? What is the most important to you? Um, 
it took me a little bit to think about this when I first saw it, but, and I'm still having trouble thinking about it now. But I would say um, when it comes to like a group, I would like to see like, you know, chemistry between the members, you know, like rather than them just being put together, like to form the group, I would also like to see like that they, you know, like each other and they kind of consider each other like family, I guess. Um, I would like to see also like, um, you know, the passion while they're performing, you know, a great straight uh, stage presence is really appreciated in my opinion. Um, and you know, it also would be great if we get to see like the members participate in the production of the music. You look, okay, side note, what in the grocery bag is that? That's a grocery bag. Like a Chanel Walmart reusable bag, but whatever. So yeah, I don't look, I don't like necessarily have things that I could like look at when I um, start standing a new group. It's just if I like them, if their music is good and I like the members presence, then yeah. This is the best outfit in this album, period. There's nothing else that's better than this in this era. All right, we are almost done. Uh, with looking at the album and this is LP my favorite song in the album um, By the way, this album did also come with a poster I believe since I pre-ordered it But me being an idiot the day I got the album uh, part of the poster ripped so I Don't want to show that and also haven't even like really looked at it that much ever since that happened. So um, Yeah, that is it for the day one album and now let's get on to the next one all right so continuing on with the Revit festival collection we have Revit festival day two um similarly to day one i also pre-ordered this album um but i also got another copy of the album because around the time that the album had come out it was a little bit after my friend's birthday who's also a Revit love so I decided to get him a copy of the album as well as a birthday present and it was pretty nice seeing like how we got excited and we were like, yeah, let's sh start our collection together. Um, in the day one album, we were actually able to, through the seller that we bought it from um, on Amazon, we were able to specify which members version we wanted, but for this album, we weren't able to, so it was random and I got Yeti. Um, this is what the, actually the travel kit, that's why I mixed it up with day one. This is, I think it says it up here, yeah. So this is the travel kit and day one was the magic kit. So let's open it up. So we have a big sticker that says carpool, their B-side. Um, and the luggage tag for Yeti with the release date of the album and her signature. And then we have a collection of stickers in this little packet. Um, it's a cute little cartoon ones and then some member ones. So we have a full one of Yeti that looks like a Polaroid. And then the rest of these, like the member ones, they kind of look like Lomo cards if you guys know what those are. Like the the cheaper photo cards that you could buy which i appreciate and love that and then we have some like kind of like album related like logo designs i would say like you know like the cute cartoony so we have the logo for the album the van we got two more yeti stickers and then we have a members uh group sticker sorry a lighthouse and this one, then we have Reeve and Yeti again. So let me move this to the side so we can look into the rest of our goodies for this album. And while we do that, I will continue on with the next question. Oh my gosh, let me pile this up. <laughs> All right. So. The next question is, if your ult wasn't your ult bias, who would take their place? 
Um, I would say like, if Ellie was in my opa, it would be him. That's why, like, I feel like if I had to take out one of them, the other one would still be my ult, so. Let's move on to the next question, which is, are there any groups you want to get into but haven't found the time? Well, um, I would say there are some groups that like, I really like their songs, but like, I feel like I'm not really like super into them that I would buy their albums um, as often as I do other groups like Red Velvet. So I would say like for your groups like that, I wouldn't say it's because I didn't have enough time. It's that like, I just didn't at the time w was like, I wasn't able to buy their albums. That would be like Luna. Um, and uh dreamcatcher as well like i love their music and i actually do listen to some of their b-sides i feel like because my favorite song from dreamcatcher is silent night that's their best b-side ever and um my favorite title track is fly high and um this is the the so the member poster was sogi and the group poster is the same one as the sticker and then let's look into the photo book, which also has the photo card. Oh, and it's Reeve again, the CD plate, but it's purple. Um, so the next question is, do you think this is just a phase or do you think you'll still listen to K-pop in the future? That is a really good question. <laughs> this is why I prefer my friend over like looking up Wattpad like stories that ask these questions. Um, I don't really think that this is a phase. Um, I never really thought of it when I first got into it as like a phase, as it, eh, instead of like, you know, my emo phase where I listened to like nothing but like Fall Out Boy and Panic at the Disco. Um, but you know, I've been into this for what, like four years now and I'm still going strong. I still actively listen to groups my playlist on Spotify has reached 550 songs, more than that. And I think I'm already at like almost 48 hours worth of like songs. So um, yeah, I, am, I feel like I'm going strong still. Um, I used to also think that me getting into anime was going to be just a phase, but nope, <laughs> we're still in. Um, but rather than like just watching like a bunch of anime in general, it's specifically like similar to like K-pop. It's like idol animes, if that makes sense. So, um, be, and it's mainly the main reason why I got into the animes is because of the games that they have on the, on like, um, the app store and stuff. So like those games I've actively been playing for more than like five years now. So ever since like that game came out and I was playing it, like that's when I got into the idol animes. So um, those are the main ones that I watch. And because of that, since they're still going strong, I'm still watching. So the photo card I have is Wendy. So yeah, to wrap up that question, I feel like I don't think this is gonna be just a phase because I still feel like uh, a couple years from now, I'm still gonna be into it, you know? I was able to make some great connections and great friendships through K-pop, so I feel like I'm not gonna just like throw that away and like end them. So the fact that I still have those friendships and stuff like that, I'm still going to, you know, be into it. So yeah, uh, we are pretty much done with the book. I would say I don't really have a favorite song in this album because not every single one of them like stood out for me. I would say like one that I like the most is um, Love Is The Way. I really like that, you know, like 50s, you know, vibe that it gets, which is very like road trippy kind of. So that's why I, like I really appreciated it being along with this theme. So yeah, that's it for this album. Let's continue on to the next one. All right, so the next album I have here is the day six the book of us gravity which is the fifth mini album um it is signed by the members i got this album as a part of my concert ticket for when they came to my city uh later last year and like in the last half um it was a couple of weeks after the semester started at my university that's how i remember 
Um, but yes, I loved this concert. I think it was easy for me to like get into Day6 and their music because as I said before, I had like that little emo quote unquote phase in high school. So hearing music that was very similar to that in uh, this, like with this band, it was really easy for me to get into their songs. I wouldn't say it's because they're emo, but it's like that rock kind of sound. Like I was instantly into it. Um, so obviously I really wanted to go to the concert and I am very glad I did. So along with this album came the High Touch, <laughs> which was an experience. I had a great time. It was chef's kiss. Um, so I went during the fan sign. I, um, I was a nervous wreck because I was like, I am going to meet these people. Oh my gosh. Um, but like, I feel like I was able to control myself because it was, I freaked out more my first fan sign or first high touch I did, which was with um, Card when they had their concert in my city, which was a whole experience, which I might say in a later video if it ever comes up. But um, yes, this high touch, Yonke, who's my bias, was the last one in line. So I was like, oof, saving the best for last, in my opinion, not trashing on the other members, but. Um, I was a nervous wreck by the time I got to Young K and then he decided instead of doing this to other people he, just for me, he grabbed my hand and pulled me in and he leaned in closer. I was like, what is going on? What in the YN is going on right now? And I was having a freak out moment and then he looked at me in my eyes and so I was like, you know what? I'll return the favor. And so he grabbed my hand and I got my other hand and wrapped it around his. I was like, yes, you know what you want to do. And he's like, you know, thank you very much. And I was like, no, thank you. And then I walked away. Like the staff almost started like pulling me out. But like Yonke was like, right now as I'm saying this, I sound delusional, but this actually did happen. I'm not the type of person to like, you know, make up some stories and be like, you know, I met him after the concert. He wanted to talk to me like, no, but this is actually what happened. So it was like, this is something that is memorable that like, I will never forget, you know? So it's like, this isn't something that like, I just am saying just to lie and exaggerate. Like that's actually what happened. So let's open this album and before we do that, let's get into my next question, which is, what is your biggest pet peeve about K-pop? That is another good question that I never really thought about. Um, I would say one thing is like how external factors could affect the group. I know that sounds very vague and like really weird, but like, um, I've been watching a lot of videos about like the histories of some groups and realizing how like there is sometimes like so much potential with certain groups that like something happens externally like within the company or something that just like wrecks their chances of like do being at the level that they could be like for example I recently watched a video on the history of Luna by one of my favorite K-pop channels. I think it's pronounced Mera or Mira. I don't really know. I'm gonna link it in the description of the video because that is like my inspiration for my YouTube videos, even though I'm doing like an unboxing video, but you know, we'll get to it. Um, and hearing about how like their whole company like was going under like a raid in the Polaris office, which is the parent company of Luna's company. Um, and like, you know, just seeing how like their whole issues with money and debt like really affected the group's chances and like their potential and how like Jaden Jung leaving the company, like, and he got rid of a whole album for Luna that could have come out last year after Butterfly. Like it was really hard, like reading about that. And especially like, I feel like the one group that I feel like I noticed this the most is definitely CLC. Like, knowing that like Lavi and Rose could have been theirs and listening to the leaked demo, like it would have been theirs 
they would have gotten it and killed it. But you know, I one did good with it as well. But like seeing that video of them being like utterly crushed when they like got the news that the comeback wasn't gonna happen um, and then it was canceled, like it was really heartbreaking to see. And um, you know, a bunch of other mistreatment that they suffer with, like no light stick and stuff. And I was just like, companies, you know, the company's fault, you know, it's not their decisions. They would be doing a lot more if they could, if they had the decision to, you know. So, enough of me talking about that. Uh, this is uh, the goodies that come with the album. It is a little bookmark that says the name of the title track, which I believe in English is the time of our lives, even though that's not what it says in Korean. But um, the two photo cards I got are my two favorite members. So I got a Doan Wump uh, Young K duo, and then I got Young K, so it's like, and then I got a dome postcard so i was uh, properly fed with this album because i got like my two like biases in the group so yeah um so as we continue flipping through the book let's continue on with the next question so um what is your opinion about privilege in k-pop now i did have to ask my friend what she meant by that but uh, after looking into it, I do realize what she meant. Um, so basically, when we're talking about privilege in K-pop, it's like how like the com groups in like the big three companies have it a lot easier to like get wins and gain popularity solely for the fact that they're from a big company. Um, you know, since it's so different, like in America com compared to Korea, where it's like the company isn't that really that big of a deal. Um, like and it doesn't really matter when you become famous or not it's just like based off of if your music is good or not um i think it's kind of you know i would say it's like bad but like it's also pretty you know it's kind of confusing when i think about it because you know um i feel like if you're a group in a in a big three company and you like debut I feel like it's a lot harder for them. What was that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, wait, we're gonna... Let's restart that answer. So basically, um, I would say um, if like a new group debuts within a big three company, I feel like it's a lot harder for them to like gain their own image, I would say. Um, AKA basically talking about TXT because like, I feel like now at this point, there are a lot of fans who like, like are, most of their fans like TXT for TXT, but I feel like most of the time, like, especially when they were starting to debut, like they were getting compared to BTS so much because they were from Big Hit. So I feel like having that, like all that expectation put on you is really hard, especially if you're going to be known for having a different style compared to like the group that was before you. Like thinking about how like ITZY is like so different from TWICE because it's like ITZY's doing the concepts that, a little bit of tea here, but that TWICE fans really want TWICE to do. <laughs> they want them to do the more mature concepts, but you know, since TWICE is like basically JYP is like way of controlling the Q concept in the K-pop industry. But I feel like now they're going a little bit more mature, which I like, but um, cause I feel like it's very hard when you have like that privilege because along with like getting like, you know, the fact that you're gonna be able to win a lot easier and stuff, you're also going in with the fact that like you're going to have all these expectations put on you because you're going to be constantly compared with your sunbay group and it's going to be harder for you to like make your own name in the industry and uh, i guess your company as well um i feel like there are some companies like the bigger companies yeah but i feel like there's some big companies where it's kind of like easy like, I didn't really see that much of a comparison happen in Plutus when, like, Seventeen debuted after Newest. But, um, like, yeah, I didn't really see that. And the same with, like, Preston and After School. Like, because After School never really debuted with, like, a cutesy concept, if I remember correctly. So it was really hard for them to, like, be compared. 
so yeah i do think privilege it's something that should be appreciated if you have it but it does come with a lot of risks because you're going to be if you're in a bigger company you're going to be guaranteed to have like a longer career and you're going to have a guaranteed like bigger fan base and you're going to have like a better career overall and a better potential to you know venture outside of just music but you know there are a lot of risks that come with that because you're going to get all those expectations put on you and you're going to have like all this stuff put on you like it's gonna be harder but you know yeah that's a really complicated answer <laughs> really long answer long-winded um so yeah this is the cd plate which i really love the only other i wouldn't say that one thing i'm mad about but like one thing that i was like you know damn imagine if was looking at the other version of this album if if my editing skills are well i'll put a picture of it up here but basically like when they were giving out these albums like as you were leaving the high touch so you never really had a choice as to what album you got and when i did the the high touch these were like one of the last copies of this version and after that they were giving out the other version of the album so i was like damn what if i got that album like what would the photos look like you know so but like i mean i have their signatures or their autographs so like what more could i say you know so this is it for the day six album. Uh, let's move on to the next. All right, so to finish off the trilogy, the next album I have is the Rabbit Festival finale. Um, this is the best out of the trilogy, in my opinion, but it's also a fact that can't be debated. Anyway, so um, this album has a very special place in my heart or I would say in my mind, because this album also comes with like a kind of like, not long-winded story, but like kind of like a big story that helps me remember it a lot. So basically um, this album, right, like I would say less than a month before it came out, I injured my knee and I basically, I tore my ACL and my meniscus as well and it was so bad to the point where i had to have surgery to get it replaced and funny enough the date of my surgery was the date of the album release so it, i was a full-on mess because the night before my friend was like staying up because you know it was winter break and he was like excited for this album we were tweeting each other like um we were messaging each other on Twitter, like finding leaked demos and like <laughs> obsessing over the teasers because it was so different from the other two days. But um, I was also having the stress of like, this is like my first major surgery that I'm going to have like done on me. And it's like, you know, I was just dealing with like those both emotions and it was like right around Christmas time. So like, I was also like, you know, worried are like stressed out with like you know family and stuff like that uh because they all came over to you know our our house since i was injured so i was like a complete mess <laughs> but i vividly remember the crackhead energy i have <laughs> right before my surgery on the way there i was fully streaming the music video and the album on spotify i was like watching the video and i was like having the time of my life for <laughs> oh my gosh mess so i was fully jamming out in the car on the way to my surgery oh my god yeah we love that so yeah this is the finale version um i wasn't really like I didn't really know that much about like the difference between the scrapbook and the finale i saw that this one was like seen as more of the limited edition so i was like you know what let me get the limited edition you know this is my birthday gift to myself you know um i got the postcard with irene because of the envelope you could tell Ooh. we love that and it just fell but it also came with a sticker with the logo of the album. The back of the postcard is also signed. 
Let me flip it around. Super cute. And then we have this amazing American Horror Story photo shoot. <laughs> this is season three, The House Down. I love it. Uh, another thing, like a minor detail that I really love about this album is how the you can see the different color uh, pages of the members. I absolutely love that choice. Whoever decided that, you're the one, you deserve a raise for giving Red Velvet what they deserve. But I do love this photo shoot, but now that I think about it, I'm like probably willing to buy the scrapbook version because I love the photo shoot for that photo book as well. And you know, there's different photo cards and stuff. And I really like the style of that one as well. So I was like, you know what? Might as well just get it. Complete the collection as you will. Um, so as we're going through this photo book, Let's move on to the next question, which is how many years do you think a trainee should be a trainee? Now, I'm not sure because I feel like it depends on the idol. Like if you're coming in to an audition and you've already been trained in dancing or vocal training, I feel like you shouldn't be a trainee for that long since you're going to be focusing on the aspects that you're not the best in that need the most improvement and like have very little training on like the things that you're already good at because I mean you got selected for a reason but then again when you're training you're also training to have like a vocal style and dancing style that's like very like you know to the company's taste if that makes sense so i mean you are going to be training for a little bit at least but like i feel like what was kind of excessive was like jihyo training for 10 years like that's insane like i didn't like but then mina only trained for one so it's like it, it really just depends on what you're coming in with like another thing for example is like i would say june from ace he was a trainee for seven years but during those seven years of training, he almost debuted in a group three different times. So it's like he didn't really necessarily have to train for that long because he would have debuted in the groups either way. Like he was almost a, he almost debuted with Vix if I remember correctly. So it would have been a seven, seven member group. But um, yeah, I feel like it just depends on how you are when you join the company that you audition for. Like, Obviously, if you're in a, a company that like you don't need that much uh, time or, or like you come in from a company that's not your first one. So like you already trained in another company beforehand. I don't think you need to train that long um, because you already have that experience and you already like understand what's going on. So I feel like it's not that big of a deal to have to train for a long time. Um, but yeah, like... <sighs> I feel like there's other factors that like you're not necessarily training it's just like you're in the preparation for a group in general that it takes a while because i know that like for ace i'm always going back to them but you know whatever i know that wow he trained in yg for a year and almost debuted with winner like he was really close to debuting with winner um he escaped <laughs> we love that um so and that's when he ended up going into i don't think he actually went into being interactive that quickly because if i remember correctly the ceo made the company basically for them to be able to debut if i remember correctly um and um don't quote me on that and um also byungkwan and chan were both in jyp for like about a year so um around the time that twice debuted and if you look at um the mini album for like ooh ah, you could see like members like momo actually thanking byungkwan in their letters so like that's how you know he was in jyp um and chan was also a zombie in the like ooh ah music video 
but that doesn't have to do with the question but basically um i feel like for trainees you should be training for as long as you need to depending on what you're coming in with if you're like really unexperienced inexperienced and but you have like something that the company wants you for they're gonna train you so that you can become a better of artist in general like better vocalist better dancer you know i feel like one main reason why you also need to have like plenty of time training like maybe at least a year is because they want you to build that stamina because you know in america it's like yeah people can dance and sing but sometimes it's like they're not doing both at the same time and for you know for k-pop like for sometimes like they're doing both at the same time obviously they're not doing it every time because they'll lose their voice super quickly but you know they're if they're doing like really intense dances and have to sing at the same time they need to build that stamina so they're not losing their breath while they're singing and performing um here is the poster for the album it's slightly bigger than the oompa oompa album posters and the photo card we have is joy with their signature her autograph sorry and part of the lyrics of the song and um another reason why i want to get the scrapbook version is because i think the cd plate looks a lot better in that version than this one because it's the paint just the pink with the track list but I really love this album, so I am not complaining that much. And we are almost done with our collection, so let us continue on to the next album. Alright, so we're nearing the end of the collection. I believe we're at the last two albums. Um, so for the first of the last two, I have the Ace Undercover The Mad Squad, which is their third mini album. Um, I don't have any other Ace albums, so um, this is the only one I have. The story behind this one is I actually got this album as a birthday gift this past this year uh, from uh, my really good friend who was the one who actually sent me the questions for this video. So shout out, let me love you. Um, and she actually was the one who got me into Ace. And when it came time for my birthday, she explained to me that when it comes to like giving birthday gifts for her friends, she usually likes to give like um, an album of the group that she helped the person stand. So since she helped me start standing ace, become a choice, um, she got me the album as a birthday present. I really love this. Um, I need to take a break for a second, but like, delicious. Sorry. I mean, the, the fake tattoos, I think they're fake, but you know, we love a, a phase, you know? Um, I just love WoW. I just love WoW. And then Chan, this is like, y'all are gonna hate me. But I feel like the, the fake lip ring is like Chan is a freshman in high school and the rest of the members are like upperclassmen and they're like peer pressuring him and he's like joining their like friend group and their clique and they're like he's doing things to like fit in. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. And then Dong Hoon look like the ringleader of the group, you know, the, the red, the red contacts, you know, the cool hats. And then, wow, delicious. I feel like this is one of their best. I love Savage. That song is so good. Oh. Let's just go through these quickly so I don't have like a full on like panic. Oh, yes. This is, this is what I wanted. This is beautiful. Anyway, I mean, just look at that. Oh my god. There we go with the lip ring. Alright. So here is where I'm gonna get controversial with the album. This is the photo card. Alright, so first, 
I thought this card was damaged when I first got it because there's these like gray spots but that's actually the wall that he's standing in front of but I mean Donghun is one of my biases so you know and this is the back so I was like you know what I'll appreciate it and this is the stickers that it comes with these were the goodies that we got for this album Again, this part of the photo shoot was really nice as well. And yeah, this is the lyrics and some behind the, I mean, can we talk about Katie Bice? Can we talk? Can we talk? We need to talk. We need to have the discussion. Like, I love how all the other members are like cutesy and have a little thing and then Wow's just like, nah, you need this fam. And we did. And that is the album. This is the CD plate. Yes, it is very weird how they did it, but you know, we like a unique style. This is the CD plate. And then it's gonna be really weird how you put it back in. No, I did it wrong. <laughs> oh, wait one sec, let's do it like this. There we go. I would say my favorite song is Savage and the Take Me Higher complete version because I say Take Me Higher is my favorite title track. So having all five of them be there, perfect. All right, now let's move on to the last album. All right, so for the final album, we have the Neo Zone, NCT's second full album. And it's such a great one at that. So, oh, this stayed in, but it comes with some stickers. I feel like Tail really did serve this era, as he should. Doyoung as well, and then I think, you know, just Jaehyun coming in with that, you know, just the jacket on. The blazer, you know. We didn't need that. That was too much for us to handle. Um, this album also came out like right before my birthday this year, so, um, I got this as a birthday present from one of my friends, um, so I was like really shocked when I got this, um, so, the first thing we have is, I think these are like, when I first saw them, they felt like, um, like you can take them off and they're like postcards. So it's like a book of postcards. And so while we look through that, we'll go through the last question, which I do think is pretty heavy loaded. Um, so if you, which you didn't know, uh, my friend who sent me the questions is a huge army. So she wanted me to try and get that, you know, army clout and uh, answer a BTS related question, which is, why do you think BTS are where they are in their career? Which is probably gonna take me a while to try and explain because I'm gonna think about it as we go along. So, let's go. So, I feel like it's kind of hard to say why BTS is at the point of the career that they're in right now. Um, because, you know, we can just say it's like just sheer luck that they got to where they are but i feel like you know i think it, it, it is kind of hard to say because you know like there could be like other groups that do similar stuff but it's just like you know bts that got that huge presence um i don't know if there's like a specific moment where it started i know it like boomed around dna because that's when they like first started going into like the american award shows but um it's kind of hard to say because you know there isn't just one single factor that led to them being where they are today i feel like just having the big presence on social media specifically like having like you know the everybody tweeting about them and like the i feel like they're one of the groups that started the whole selka day thing on twitter so um 
I feel like they were able to, you know, deliver each comeback that they had. So it was kind of hard for people to like drop off after a certain song if you were like really into K-pop because I feel like they're a huge popularity in Korea which I I feel like it started around um, the I Need You Dope area or era, sorry, like t mid-2015 and then ever since Wings, that's when they started getting like massive international attention. Um, so I feel like they were able to like come up with like songs that like people were able to like you know fall in love with and it so it made it hard for them to like not hate them and then i feel like i feel like one of the main reasons why they're like at their point in their career is social media because if you think about it that's how they got that's how they get their award show wins internationally like in america they get like top social artist top social like biggest best fandom you know i feel like that is one of the biggest factors when it comes to international wise and the fact that they're able to like keep up with it and i feel like that's been able to lead to like a rise in like um just the hollywood wave in general um even though there were already groups that started touring i feel like i think there's something like very like I wouldn't say controversial, but like, it's kind of heavy handed when you try to say like BTS paved the way because like they didn't necessarily like to put it into an, to an analogy, like put the cement on the sidewalk for people to, you know, walk because there were other groups that were also touring America and having a presence in America before BTS. Like there was the Wonder Girls touring with the Jonas Brothers. There were Shiny having their world tours and Black had their world tours, I think also like before bts started gaining that popularity um yes uh like and also exo and got seven are able to hold their own like concerts in big arenas around the world like without the help of like not the help but like you know they don't let me not say that but you know like it is i feel like there's a lot of factors that come into it, as I've probably said multiple times, but like, it's their, their, you know, their social media presence also really helps a lot. Um, you know, I feel like also their social media presence has led to like other artists trying to, you know, team up with them, which I think is just for clout, you know, trying to get the K-pop stands to become fans. Um, but you know that's just my opinion um because like if it weren't for their social media presence do you think that ariana grande is gonna be like oh this group that i saw in an award show like you know let me take a picture with them no she's probably doing that because they got the clout that's my opinion she should do it with yeti though but you know i'm not saying that because i'm biased but you know she loves her for a reason um and I would say like, you know, a lot of these American celebrities, I mean, do you think John Cena would be a huge BTS fan if they didn't have a presence in the American award shows? If his kids stand them, maybe, but you know, he, if, if, his, if it's only his kids standing them, they're probably just gonna be like, you know, oh, it's just another thing that my kids are into, you know? Um, yeah, I feel like, also, um, taking into account, like, you know, I, I think social media is just one of the biggest factors as to why they're so, why they're at their point in their career. Um, you know, if you have anything sold with BTS on it, it's going to be sold out no matter if it's like, you know, crappy makeup or, you know which is a whole other story um but like you know i feel like you know with the whole like pave the way as i said earlier like they're not the first to do like a tour in the u.s or to be on a late night tv show because you know 
or a daytime TV show because the Wonder Girls went on the Wendy Williams show and the Girls' Generation went to the Regis and Kelly and Dave Letterman show. Like, K-pop artists have had a, you know, presence in, you know, international media. However, I feel like BTS is one of the first groups to actually do it with songs in Korean. Because if you do notice, like Girls' Generation, they were over there, they were promoting on like the TV shows because they had English versions of their songs, of The Boys and uh, Nobody. And uh, that's how they started to, that's how Wonder Girls started touring with Jonas Brothers. They were singing it in English. Um, and I would say also like, yeah, I feel like like with the presence like in other, me like, forms of TV like that's how Blackpink was able to go on like the t daytime TV shows and they were singing in Korean and the late night talk shows as well and uh, you know I feel like again going back to social media like for talk show hosts to have a presence on social media like why do you think James Corden is preaching you know I'm Papa Mochi now you call me Papa Mochi he wouldn't keep it that long if people weren't into BTS like that you don't see him doing that with any other American artist. Oh, call me uh, Daddy Styles, like Papa Styles. Like, no, like he's only doing that for like the clout to get the armies to continue standing him and watching even though BTS isn't going to be on the episodes, which I don't think works all the time, but you know, whatever. Um, yeah, I'm, I think that's I think that's it for me talking about that because, you know, I don't know what else to say. And I don't want to keep on repeating myself all the time. Okay, so here is where I have the photo cards. So I have Jungwoo for the regular photo card. And for the circle, I have Taeyeon. I feel like this part of the video is going to be super long, so I apologize. But here is the CD plate. And here is the poster. The one thing I am kind of shook about is the fact that there's a repackage coming out in a couple of weeks in May. If the songs are a lot better, or not a lot better, but if they live up to the rest of the album, I might as well get it for myself, you know? Um, but I have already bought some albums that are coming in, which will be shown in a future video, so look out for that. Um, yeah, so that was all the questions I had and all the albums I had. So, yeah, let's wrap up the video now. Alright, so this is the end of part two as well as the whole album collection. Um, I hope you had fun learning more about me and my collection in general. Um... Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. As for what's coming up, as I said in, earlier in my video, um, I do have some more albums actually right here, right next to me, but they're part of another collection that I want to show off in another video. And I actually have another album that still hasn't come to my house yet. So when that comes in, I'll definitely show a video unboxing it and showing my reactions for the first time. Um, so yeah, um, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope to see some of you uh, coming back for my future videos. Uh, I'm really excited to see how this, you know, channel is going to go and how this project is going to work. Um, so yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. As I said again, uh, if you like the video, you know, leave a like. If you want to subscribe, you could subscribe. Um, you know, leave some nice comments. That's pretty much it for these videos. I'm probably going to go play Persona 5 Royal now, so I'm gonna be busy. See you guys later.